possible. So let's get this going here on the stream. Burning in hell. So this is, uh, by the way, this is the Michael Malice's podcast, and this is where it came out. It came out on Michael Malice's podcast the other day. So let's listen up right now to this. And as we go through this, I'm going to pause it and talk about whether or not this is a normal contractual clause, right? Which is probably something only I'm qualified. So I'm going to give you my opinion, my unfettered opinion on whether or not this is fair or unfair. And then we'll talk about the hypocrisy of it, right? But we're gonna let's separate it out. Let's just say, see, okay, is this normal or not? Um, but you also it's had fine. some other news. So you're officially have left louder with Crowder. I did. I left I left a while ago, yeah, a little while ago. Um, I had left um I think we talked we talked that day a bit. Uh, I had had jury duty actually when I was gonna go back onto the show. They had offered uh an NDA uh, that I had turned down and uh, they, uh, he did give me a nice, you know, going away uh, thing, get, you know, gift. I don't want to get into it, but. Okay. So here's what I want to say here. First of all, uh, when he said, when he said here that, um, and by the way, uh, this isn't about people saying whether they like or hate malice. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about whether you like or hate malice, What I give a shit about the gets the content here. Um, so gave him a going away gift. See, what I'm wondering is, did he give him money? And if you gave him money, that's actually what they usually give you. That's why they give you a severance when you leave a job. So when you leave, when you, when you leave a job, they give you severance because that's their justification. That's their additional consideration, right? Because contracts need consideration. And when you're adding terms to a contract, like in a severance, that's the additional consideration is that severance money and the ability to give you that money. That's why that's kind of the most effective thing is to pay people for a certain amount of months because you can take the money away and then the, you effectively have a non-compete, right? You're paying them to non-compete. So Dave says it's cash. Okay. So my first thing, you know, once again, it's probably cash, right? So that's usually the string. It's just like the federal government. The federal government gives cash, but it's carrot and stick, right? It's always carrot and stick. Always carrying and stick. Uh, Jay says, my sis is an esthetician, has to sign them. Yeah, once again, not enforceable. They're usually not worth the paper they're written on. Uh, Brandon says, always have a good time hanging out. Get feeling better. Just don't go to Isekai by Truck Coon on Breaded. Oh, man, we'll be talking all the Isekai. Don't worry about that. Um, also, I just watched a pretty good anime, so we'll talk about that as well. Yes, what's up, Ben? Good to see you, brother. Hope you're feeling better. Got the fucking sniffles today. Contract formula equal O plus A slash C. Yes. Offer, agreement, consideration, basics of contracts. It's shocking how many lawyers don't know that. It is fucking shocking how many lawyers don't know that. It was still just, it, but they decided not to have me back on. I decided to leave uh, and I walked from the show. It was uh, a long time coming, about a year now. It was just through various contract issues and not... It, it's an odd thing because I wanted to address it and we had talked about it a little bit and you made a very good point to me of like, I could either bring it up or have my story be told for me. Yeah. And, um, I don't, it sucks because I, I'm never one of those people that wants to go out and kind of, it doesn't feel like narking, you know what I mean? But it's, it's one of those things where after what happened, even when I left Anthony's show, there were so many people that drew their Anthony own. Anthony Anthony Kumia show for yeah. people that don't know me. I used to be the co-host there. So many conclusions were drawn to what actually happened as opposed to what actually happened. And <laughs> good, I don't want people to think that that there's things that went on behind the scenes that didn't. Yeah. So just to, to fill in the blanks, I think a lot of times, uh, and we've all experienced this on social media, I certainly have, when someone doesn't uh, get their story out and there's gaps, uh, the audiences will fill in those gaps for you and leap to all sorts of conclusions and just kind of create a narrative that doesn't at all comport to reality. Uh, and, and, and of course that's okay. So of course that part I think is pretty true, right? People always speculate when you don't know something, you speculate and some speculation is going to be wrong, but a lot of times speculation is correct, right? Because if you go off what you have, and oftentimes if you follow Occam's razor, the, you know, the easiest, simplest solution, right? The easiest, simplest reason you're going to come to a right solution. And a lot of people online do guess. I mean, if you have 100 guesses 
100 different theories as to why, for example, Tucker left Fox. One of those theories is probably right. And in fact, the majority theory is often right. The thing that most people think is often right, particularly the non-deranged folks. The non-deranged folks. So a lot of times when it's it, a lot of times, I don't always do this, but it's important to be like, all right, here's the tea. This is what really happened and, and so on and so forth. Do you want to talk a bit about like, you know, what led up to this decision on your part? Yeah, um, I guess the, the beginning of it was uh, everything was going pretty well at the beginning of the show. When I when did you join that show? Let's talk I, about that. OK, uh, I joined the show in I was first offered February 2001. Okay, so 2001? No, 2021. Okay, I yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I it was right. Like, we, we needed to make America laugh because they knew something was on the horizon. Yes, I <laughs> I, I joined in my fifth year of high school, uh, which is a fact. Uh, yes, I, jo <laughs> I joined shortly uh, before 9-11. Yes. Um, yeah, we. Uh, and by the joined... way, we'll talk about. I know people in the chat are talking about the divorce. We will talk about that later, okay? So that's another factor. This is just about the contract. So I'm just listening here for any contractual terms. I'm not talking about divorce right now, but we'll get to it. Don't worry. Uh, and Jay Steph says, I'm behind, but left field guess Tucker buys a huge chunk of the blaze and goes there. I hope he doesn't. Uh, unless he gets like a controlling share and he makes it his own thing, that might be fine for him. But otherwise, yeah, he needs to be careful. He um, needs to be careful in february 2021 um when anthony i thought was going to be moving to south carolina yeah so and by the way uh about the, just to loop the timeline here 2021 was actually when uh crowder's wife filed for divorce so the she filed the divorce in 2021 they just finalized it right in april 25th of 2023 so they finally finalized it uh in april 2023 so yes it is confirmed that Crowder is getting divorced. So this timeline of when he moved over is actually uh, when he uh, when he did that. And by the way, Selrin, just so you know, I am going to talk about Pearl, and we are going to go through that. Drex is uh, going to do a pimp cast with me next week, and we're going to talk all about Pearl and these female manosphere grifters. We're going to talk about that. Um, don't worry. That's coming. That's coming. Uh, Stephen had made an offer to come work for him, and I had been guesting on the show fairly regularly, so yep. I took him up on that offer. Okay. Um, how did you find it? Let's, let's talk about that. You want to talk about the end? You want to talk about the beginning? How do, how do you want to talk about the situation? The beginning was great uh, for a while. You know, it really was. It was a lot of hanging out, collaborating, putting out sketches, doing the things that I was hired for. Really a grind. Uh, and by but the way, that was this part. is a clip because this is a long stream. So this is just the parts where Dave Landau is talking about this. Of it, um, the the pot was sweetened, so to speak, is what I was offered. It was not this gigantic payday that everybody seemed to think. It was uh, almost no bump, but you didn't was, get fifty million dollars. No, no, I didn't get. I got about a grand extra a year, but I, you know, it's hard to talk about money. But it was, a, it was but I knew that it would help on the road and, you know, he wanted me to be. Yeah. Okay. Pro tip here, guys, do not talk about money publicly online. Pro tip. Do not do that. That that's where, okay. Look, look, I love Joe, but he needs to calm down with talking about money online. Cause when you start doing that, you know, who's listening, those fed boys, right? Those fed boys, you don't want to be, you don't want to be talking about money online because they listen it and they want in their tax revenue. Right there on more Fridays um, and that started being a point of tension because I started making money on the road but and I did say I would be there on more Fridays but every time I would show up he wouldn't show up okay and I just said all right well I'm just gonna work or go and see my son and you know he's in Detroit and I said as long as everything was working out there was a possibility that they could move there yeah they mean um, your your family yes so about a year went by and, and things had gotten more tense, like things were more restrictive. For example, uh, um, I had been more censored as things went on where I couldn't, for example, say the word come. Okay. Okay. So, so, okay. Here's the first thing that the first like term that he's brought out, 
He cannot say the word come. Is that reasonable or not reasonable? Okay. So let's talk about this. All right. So he can't say the word come. Is that a reasonable restriction? Well, it depends on what type of show you're running, right? So look, I get this. My, this is legal mindset. This show is not PG-13. Okay. Now it's not X rated like locals. It's not like triple X rated like locals, but like you can say coom as much as you want on this channel. You're going to be okay. I need to, I'm going to come. Do not come. I'm going to come. But I get that. Yeah. If, if, if this is your target audience, right? If your audience is boomer religious conservatives, in that case, yeah, that probably is a reasonable restriction. I know it sounds bad, but like, obviously, look, if it's Crowder's show and he says, this is our target audience, that is reasonable, right? It's still his show. So offering to come on and be a co-host, at the end of the day, we do have to understand you were coming on to Crowder's show. And I think this is the problem is... And this is why you always need to, I advise that you run your own business and then collaborate with other people, right? Because the guy who's at, there's always a guy at top, right? Whenever you make these fake partnerships, it's never 50-50. It's always 60-40 at best, you know? And usually effectively it's 90-10. Like, I just don't think partnering is smart. It's better to collaborate. But when you collaborate or when you go join somebody in their business venture, understand who's on top and on bottom. In Korean, there's there's a phrase, kap and un, right? Which literally means the top and the bottom, right? And you can even think of it in a sexual sense. I really don't give a shit. But you have to understand the power dynamic in every business relationship. So if you are coming into somebody's business and they've got the power, right? You got to do what the fuck they want to do. If you don't like that, go do your own thing. Fuck off. <laughs> Blaze had a problem with <laughs> sorry making me laugh they wouldn't hire uh, Alex Stein it's clearly a Crowder issue not being against coming yeah yeah but once again look I'm trying to be fair here I'm trying to be fair I wouldn't ban that on my show it's totally fine here but if somebody wants to ban that on their show that's freedom see this is the thing about even masks right and this is where I might some people might disagree with me right here's my hear me out I think if you run a business, you have the right to require in that business that people do anything you want. If people have to come into your business and they have to do the fucking Macarena, that can be something that you in your individual liberty running your own private business can require them to do the Macarena. You can also require them to wear a mask, right? But here's the thing. They should also be free to say, fuck you, we're going next door to the place that doesn't require the Macarena, that doesn't require the mask. And I think that's true freedom. And then the true freedom in the market is that business that requires masking gets blown out of business because they're a bunch of cops, right? So in this case, Crowder, I think he has the right to censor on his own program. However, he also has the right to get blown out and to lose and for people to surpass him who are willing to say come or come dumpsters. By the way, come dumpsters, good word. Good word. What's up in the chat? What's up, Coke Fairy? Good to see you. Uh, and Joseph Binowitz, welcome to BLM. Welcome to the Base Legal Mindset. The best out there, the replay gang as well. Got all the replays emojis. Welcome, welcome. Also, Brandon the Anime Guy with the members chat. My understanding is that Tucker started the Daily Caller. He turned over control of it when he went to work for Fox. He could potentially pick that back up as he should. I think he should. I think he should do his own thing. But let's continue here. Uh, like ejaculate. I, right. I forgot when I made the joke that was offensive or whatever it was. You about. could only eat it. You couldn't say it's, it's going to go in your mouth, not come out of your mouth. I could eat it with a spoon, or I could say yummy yum yums when referring to it, but I could never actually say. That's I could eat it hilarious. with a fork. I could eat it on a ship. I, <laughs> yes. I can't finish the rhyme, but you get me. I could call. I, I could refer to. I could go, those are nice gutters you have, but I couldn't uh, say that uh, I had the gutters. They're vascular. I'm yeah. very oh, pleased man. with them these days. Yeah. Are you still there? They're I back. Hope. Yeah. Good for you. I, I don't you. have cum gutters at all. 
Shh, don't uh, say that. <laughs> I, well, I just don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I you're forgot not allowed to use that word in this show. I forgot about the email you sent me. No, I, you're not allowed to use the word gutters. Any reference to manual labor is for bots. I'm sorry, I, I don't have the com. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, it, it became a little weird because a light was put in where it was his rant button. And it was basically a Dave Don't Talk button. Wait, so there's literally a light bulb? We'll talk about this. We'll talk about this. We'll talk there about was this. four lights in a row. <laughs> there were three it... lights. <laughs> serious. And when it was hit, I wasn't supposed to talk. And they Dude, said, wait, wait, you know, Was it like a regular colored light bulb or was it like red? Uh, it was like a, a, light, a yellow, uh, okay. a pretty bright yellow. Like a, okay. a, you know, like yield. So it's like off camera, but in your eyesight. Yes. And, and I was, would he be the one pressing the button or was there a producer pressing the button? He would press it. So like under like Mr. Burns, like he had a button <laughs> under his desk or, or the table. And when it's Steven's turn to talk and Dave needs to shut the F up, he presses this button. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So let's let, let me say this. By the way, first of all, shout out to Tug. What's up? Hey there. Good to see you, brother. Uh, good to see you in the chat. Uh, hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying based out there and uncensored. Appreciate you, my friend. Appreciate you, my friend. Um, all right, so let's talk about this. Okay, rant button, right? Like a rant button. It Now, is this legal, right? Is it something that is legal? Sure, right? Is it something that might be even, uh, you know, something that Crowder wanted to do in his own personality? Sure, right? Is there even some logic to it yeah sure look at these panels on youtube i wish on these nine person panels there was a shut the fuck up button for certain people on the panels especially when you go on other panels with people you don't know there's a shut the fuck up button because you want people to talk right but that being said it's kind of a cuck move now is it with it was within his right of running his own show sure but it is a pretty cuck move not gonna lie not gonna lie 